Hello, Bill Barney here and welcome to All Things Possible TV. I'm excited today. I'm in one of my favorite places in the world. I'm here at uh, Bo the Bullfrog Bay at Lake Powell in southern Utah. And it's just been a fantastic day. I'm here in a little alcove and it's just quiet. Other than the speed boats and the jet skis running around circles around us. But other than that, it's just a beautiful day. Today I'd like to talk to you about how you can make other people change. Or can you make other people change? Because you've heard you really can't change another person. The only person you can really change is yourself. But there's some nuances to this. There's some cool aspects to this. And that's what I want to share with you today. Because normally, when we want another person to change, what's our thing? We need to go tell them what they're doing wrong, how wrong-headed they are, how sick they are, and that they need to do things our way so the world will be a happy place. That's typically our approach to getting another person to change, right? And I don't know about you, but I haven't had very good success with that. So before I get into that whole subject, I invite you to go to our website, www.allthingspossible.biz. See, it's right here at the bottom of the screen right there. There you go. <laughs> and uh, Join our community. We send out weekly newsletters. Uh, we do a new video and a new blog every week. There's a lot of great stuff in our community. We want to share and give people tools and ideas, things that they can do to make your life better both with, uh, with my aspect of the energy healing, working on the internal stuff, and with Chris as a professional speaker, author, coach, and mentor, uh, helping people work on lifestyles and uh, uh, mind systems. I, I said that wrong, but you know what I mean, right? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so on how do you get people to change? Well, again, the typical methods, the methods that we naturally want to use don't work. But if you work on changing yourself, that's where real change happens. Because whenever someone does something that irritates you, that gets on your nerves, what they're really doing is holding a mirror up in front of your face. And if it irritates you, it's because that there's something inside of you that's out of order, and uh, or it wouldn't irritate you. It'd be like water off a duck's back, and it just slide off. It's like, okay, you know what, they're being a little bit silly or funny, but it won't get under your skin. Under your skin, there's something wrong inside of you. That's that's the premise here. And so, if we can work on these types of things, often the other person's behavior changes, and it's magic. It, you don't even have to address the situation with them. It's like it happens automatically. It's not a guarantee. It doesn't happen all the time. But I guarantee you, it gives you much better success than nagging and yelling. Okay. So I'd like to suggest three things. I'm going to pull out my little notes here. Make sure I get them in the right order. I'd like to suggest three methods, processes that you can use to, uh, to help other people. The first one is to improve yourself. And when we improve ourselves, let me see what we got here. Uh, when we improve ourselves, when we fix ourselves, very often the other th uh, the other person's problems kind of go away or they don't go away. I'm share with you, I learned a hand technique. Now you can do this all you want, but unless you've learned this specific technique and hit it the exact spots, uh, it takes about 20 minutes to learn to do this correctly. Uh, it, you can rub your hands all day long and it doesn't really fix anything. But when you do this hand technique, it's a healing process. When you do it correctly, I use this to help people with PTSD, with anxiety, to heal trauma. And it's just, it's just like taking an eraser on a chalkboard and can wipe those things out quickly. Once I realized the power of this, and I had heard the concept of it, it's something inside of you, the mirror concept, that when somebody irritates you, it's something inside of you. I heard that about 15 years ago, and I understood it conceptually. But I never really, it never really sunk home. It's how do you go about doing that? How do you find that? Once I learned this process with the hand technique, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start using this. So I've been married to my sweetheart for 35 years, and she is an amazing person, and we have a great marriage. However, we are human, and I can be a little bit of an embracing person sometimes. And so we do things once in a while to get on each other's nerves. If you've ever lived with anybody for any length of time, you possibly had that experience. Where they can be a great person, but you know, you will do things that rub each other the wrong way. So I changed my methods because up until that point in my marriage, I figured, hey, 
if she's doing something wrong, it's my job, my duty, and even my obligation to tell her what she's doing wrong so that she can be perfect like me, right? I mean, that's, that's how we do, that's how we fix people. Uh, but I changed my precept, or I changed my concept, my thought. I decided when, when she's doing or saying something that is irritating to me, if it irritates me, I'm going to take accountability and say, you know what, there's a something broken, there's some wires that are crossed inside of me, I'm going to fix that first. And so here's how a typical conversation would go with us after I changed. We'd be driving down the road or we'd be doing something and I'd be sitting here just with my hands inconspicuously d doing this little process. And Chris would say, honey, what you doing? I'd say, well, dear, I'm processing. And she goes, is it something I did? And I'd say eloquently, yep. And then she would say, well, tell me what it is. I was like, honey, it's none of your doggone business. If, if you're doing something that irritates me, I'm the one with the problem. And so I'm going to fix me first. And if I think you need to know about it, I'll be sure to tell you. But for right now, it's my problem, and I would refuse to tell her. Uh, I, I did learn afterwards just not to do it in front of her where she could see me because I brought up too many questions. She wanted to know what was going on. But I really did take this seriously to where I was going to fix the things within me first. And here's where I discovered something that's so amazing is that over half of the time after I worked on that situation enough to where that behavior didn't bother me, over half the time the behavior stopped and I would never tell her what it was. It was just crazy. I just, it was something so unexpected to me to see that that behavior would change. And that's what I'm talking about. How do you change other people? Fix yourself. That's your best chance. You can work on you. You are the person you have the, the power to change. Now, it didn't always stop the behavior, but then for many other things, it's just like, you know what? I could, right now, I could not sit down and tell you what the things was that I was working on that bothered me, because they're in the past, they're gone. They don't bother me anymore. She might still do the behavior, but it doesn't bother me. And if there's an occasion where something is still bothering us enough that we need to address it, then you can address it calm, cool, and collected and in a space of unconditional love. Let's take, for example, a child with a messy room. I don't know if you've ever heard of those, but they do exist, children who don't clean their rooms. Now, typically, when you talk to your child about their messy room, is when you can't stand it anymore. You're mad, you're your wit's end, and you go and, well, I'm, I'm speaking from how it worked in the Barney household, then I would go and start telling my child what a pig they was or how they needed to clean up and, we couldn't live like that. And in my anger, I would often say some very unkind and even damaging things to my children. And I think maybe you can relate to that. However, had I known to use this then, at the point when my children had their messy room syndrome stuff going on, if I could have done it to where it didn't bother me anymore, and it's still it's like, you know what, it's not cool for the child to never clean their room. Then I can go and I can sit down calmly and talk to them and explain and come from a point of love, but still from a point of, hey, this needs to change, and I would have, you would get much better results. So that's the one thing I want to share with you. However, um, and if you want to learn this technique, I'd be happy to, to have you schedule an appointment with me, get onto our website and email me. But there's other things you can do. And let me just give you another couple of suggestions, because if somebody, is always late showing up for whatever for appointments with you or a, a, a date or a, you're meeting a friend for lunch and they're always late and that just drives you it's like well i'm never late so what's wrong with me how, how do you figure that out and so i have a couple of suggestions that may put you on that path to self-discovery is one put yourself in the other person's shoes and not just what's happening that day but try and see their life from their life experience what kind of a family did they come from? What experiences have they had throughout their life? What things are important to them? And, and, and what traumas, uh, what things have they gone through? And maybe you can start to say, you know what? I can understand why this person is, is always late. Or maybe I, I don't understand their behavior. But my gosh, if I had went through what that person went through, I'd be a chocolate mess. Whatever, but it helps you gain insight. Another thing you can do is journal. And this is a great thing, and I'm going to give you two suggestions that you can write down to start journaling. And you just take a piece of paper and you write down, I, this person irritates me because, and then complete that sentence in as many different ways as you can. 
this person irritates me because, 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 because. And just write it all out and get it out on paper. You, it seems silly, but if you've never journaled this way as a it's amazing what you start to realize and learn about yourself as you put it down on paper. It's like you're opening the book that's never been opened before. You're like, oh my gosh, that's where this comes from. And you begin to fix these things within yourself. The other thing you can do is write down a question or, or fill, fill, start a sentence and fill it out in as many different ways as you can. Is The first time or other times in my life that I remember feeling the same way when I was irritated at other people for doing the same thing. And go back as early as you can and just jot those down. And you'll find some self-discovery things and in the process you'll realize what's triggering you, what's out of balance, and you'll self-correct that thing with where people aren't getting on your nerves. So again, to fix them, fix yourself. And most of the time you won't even ever have to address the situation with them because it will resolve itself. So that is part one, or the first aspect of the first tool I would say is to how to get other people to change. Another one is to forgive, accept, and allow. That. Forgive them, accept them, and allow them to be who they are. It is amazing when we can let go of our expectations of others and our judgments. It's like, they need to be this way, they need to be that way. Say, you know what? That person behaves in a way that is incomprehensible to me, but I didn't grow up in their shoes. I don't know what caused them to I'm just going to let it be. And I'm going to forgive them. Just simply forgiving, saying, I forgive that person. Don't tell them to their face. I forgive you for always being late. You're probably going to start another argument. And then they'll tell you all the things you did wrong, and it's not going to be a productive conversation. But in your heart, speak it out loud, not to them. I forgive this person for always being late, for example, if that's what it is, or for not cleaning their room. When you do that, many times the behavior will stop. I've seen this over and over in my life and with my clients. I'd like to share you one story. I'm going to, let's see, what's the name we want to use? Um, Darla. I know exactly who I'm thinking about. Her name is not Darla, but we're going to call her Darla because of privacy things. Okay. But I, this is just one example of stories I have experienced over and over and over again. Not guaranteed to happen every time. Not guaranteed how many times it happens. Darla, I'm going to be used by her grandfather from the time she was four years old till she was about 11. And uh, when a few years later she finally got the courage to tell her family what grandpa had been doing to her, and none of them believed her. In fact, her mother got quite angry at her. I got something biting my leg. Hang on a minute. There we go. Oh, biting flies. Anyway, back to Grandpa's story, <laughs> or Darla's story. Um, her mother not only didn't believe her, but got upset with her and says, "You know what? You're just trying to destroy this family. You're just trying to, you're just trying to cause drama and tear up our family." And when I met Darla, she was in her mid thirties and had had a a strained, dysfunctional relationship with her mother since this time as a teenager where they just did not get along well at all. Well, as I met Darla and we started doing the work together, obviously we start working on healing the trauma of the abuse and then forgiving. And that that's the, the, the two big things to heal from abuse is to heal the trauma and forgive the perpetrator. But with Darla also, it was very important that she forgive her mom for not believing her, for making her an outcast of the family. I mean, she basically became the odd one out of the family because she tried to say what happened. And so in our first, in my first session with Darla, we worked on what for her was the most important issue was forgiving her mom for not believing her. And I remember telling Darla in that session, I says, don't be surprised if your mother's behavior changes, if you notice a change in your mother and if your relationship doesn't get better. Just don't be surprised, I see it happen very often. Well, five days later, I got an email from Darla, and she says, you wouldn't believe what happened. She says, my mom called me. It was a miracle. She called me. She was so upset with herself. She apologized to me. She told me how sorry she was that she didn't believe me and that she hadn't been there to support me through all that time and just asked for my forgiveness. She says it was so amazing because she had no idea. Darla's mother had no idea that Darla had been working on forgiveness. I told Darla, I said, don't call your mother and tell her to forgive her because she still thinks she's right. There's no point in it. But 
once Darla let go of all this junk that she was hanging on to, it's like it, it released from her mother as well. And again, you can't say that it's going to happen every time, but you'd be surprised how many times it happens. And now they have a wonderful relationship, and, and, and Darla's uh, healing journey was greatly accelerated by this process and by having her mother come to her. Of course, you can still forgive somebody even if you are not sorry. what it is. I can't change it, but I'm not going to be in resistance to it. The last thing, the third point that I want to share with you is a funny little word called Ho-O-Pono-Pono. Say that again. Ho-O-Pono-Pono. -pono. It sounds like Dr. Seuss on acid, doesn't it? Anyway, Ho-O-Pono-Pono -pono is an ancient Hawaiian forgiveness and healing technique, which loosely translated means to make things right with one's ancestors or rich relations. And it is the most simple and amazing process. I'm not, I have other videos. Please check out my other videos on YouTube or other blog on Ho'oponopono itself. But I just want to briefly address this. The concept, the precepts of Ho'oponopono is, is that if something in your life is out of balance, you have some personal responsibility and accountability for what it is. And you can look at a situation and go, I have no idea, that has nothing to do with me, but that is wrong. And I, if you'll just accept the principle of Ho'oponopono, and it's very simple. It's four statements that you repeat over and over, over like a mantra, you can add a feeling to it. But it's this, please forgive me, I am sorry, I love you, and thank you. It doesn't have to be in that order. example, your child not clean up their room. Okay, how, do, how does my child need to forgive me for them not cleaning up their room? But just take accountability. Try it. Put it to the test. It is amazing what can happen when you start doing Ho'oponopono. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you and thank you. It is amazing what you can do to heal a relationship. Whenever I'm working with someone and they have a dysfunctional relationship with a loved one, like a family member, a parent, a child, and it's so toxic and caustic that they cannot talk to that person. This is the one tool that I suggest. I say start doing it. And it's almost impossible to convince somebody on an intellectual level how and why this works. I can say, you know what? Don't worry about how it works. Just try it and see if you get results. It's like, I mean, imagine the first time you give somebody a cell phone. Before I'm going to try to make a call, you've got to understand to me where this radio signal comes and how the person and how it sounds like me. And, you know, you don't need to know all the comp all the process of why and how a cell phone works. You just need to know that if you pick that puppy up and dial a certain number, your person, a certain person is going to pick it up on the other end. We're looking for results. So I invite you to address Ho'oponopono the same way you might do your cell phone or any other concept you don't understand. But you use it as you expect for some results. Do that with Ho'oponopono. You'll get great results. And very often the person will change and the whole situation changes when you do the whole thing. But it comes down to taking accountability, taking responsibility. Instead of the blame, it's all their fault. They're wrong. It's like you know, maybe it's something to do with it. And by saying that, it fixes things. Okay, that's what I have for you today. I hope that uh, you'll try that and when someone you feel like needs to be changed, start working on changing yourself. Use these tools and techniques that I've talked about and see what happens our uh, website www.allthingspossible.biz and join our community there uh, sign up to receive the free tr seven trades and also you'll get our weekly emails and blogs and lots of free stuff gifts there and information that is available to you on a wide variety of subjects thanks for joining us have a great day we'll see you next time bye bye